Admiral James Lyons, retired commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. And Admiral, it's uh, always good to have you with us. Thanks for being here. Uh, let's, it's nice to be back with you, Lou. Admiral, let's turn to first uh, the talking points, which uh, it seems that no one, after uh, General Petraeus made it clear that uh, there had been changes in those talking points, this the testimony before Congress has been surveyed. Congressman Mike Rogers, uh, the uh, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, said it, it's got to be the White House because everybody else has testified that they didn't. Do you agree? I agree. And in that deputies committee, I'm sure the White House representative, the national security from the National Security uh, Agency uh, Council uh, had his marching orders. His marching orders and Petraeus, for his part, says that part of the confusion here, and that is primarily, I believe, it is safe to say that confusion between the testimony he gave to Congress three days after September 11th and what he said uh, over the past few days to Congress uh, represents what happens when you try to avoid tipping off terrorists. Do you buy that? Well, uh, according to Congressman King, um, it certainly indicates that uh, Petraeus lied during his first testimony. And not a ploy, but rather straightforwardly misrepresented uh, the truth to Congress. Is it possible for a military man, a, a head of the intelligence uh, agency, uh, to decide, take it upon himself or herself, uh, the good of the country and misrepresent reality to the United States Congress? I don't know what type of pressures were brought on him, but certainly based on what uh, Congressman King has reported uh, in the open press, it certainly appears that way. Let, let's turn to uh, the president uh, pivoting, as the White House is uh, putting it, uh, to the Pacific, uh, which means he is uh, obviously now in Southeast Asia. Uh, you see a more political motivation here than, uh, if you will, geopolitical or foreign policy issues. <laughs> well, this is the old Washington game. When you have a scandal breaking and brewing in Washington, get out of town. And what do you think of uh, the president deciding to use the, the language of the, uh, the former uh, military government uh, of Burma and refer to uh, Burma as uh, Myanmar? Uh, what, what do you make of that, if anything? Well, uh, I really don't know what to make of it, but uh, certainly while he's out there on this trip, I certainly hope he would take the opportunity to uh, condemn China for its bullying and aggressive tactics in its island imperialism in the South and East China Sea. And while he's there, he should make it very clear to China that should their tactics involve in hostilities between our allies, Japan and the Philippines, our mutual defense treaty will be brought into play. Anything less than that uh, will not deter China from its aggressive tactics. A shot needs to be fired across her bow. And uh, give us your best judgment. Will such a, such a warning be issued? Will such language be used by this president? when he seems to be involved with uh, the smaller countries, if you will, of Southeast Asia? Well, it's part of the overall security program there, and if he's interested in maintaining stability, we can't continue to uh, stay with the position that we have, which is we don't get involved in bilateral disputes. All that does is give China a free hand to continue with their bullying and aggressive tactics. We know what China's objective is. The economics of it is only one part of it. Their ultimate goal is to drive us out of the Western Pacific. They want to be the dominant player in the first island chain and out to the second island chain, which includes Guam. You have to take this on. It is essential for our security and the stability of all our allies out in the Western Pacific. And Admiral, in your best estimate, uh, how long before China can match uh, our fleet superiority, our Navy uh, uh, dominance uh, in the region? Well, they have a very aggressive uh, military program underway now. They're, uh, 
They have um, they've just uh, been doing the first sea trials with the aircraft carrier that they converted, that they bought from the Ukraine. Uh, they've developed a sophisticated uh, nuclear ballistic uh, submarine force as well as nuclear attack submarines. They are building a very aggressive amphibious capability. It's, all of this goes well beyond what's required for the defense of the homeland when there's no known threat. And Admiral, quickly turning to Israel and uh, the, the engagement with Hamas, which, uh, which looks like right now, despite the involvement of the United Nations Secretary General and others in trying to mediate, it looks like this could well turn into a, a, a ground operation, uh, which the Israelis have threatened uh, within a matter of days. What, what are your, what's your outlook? Well, I think that certainly is a possibility. But, Lou, you've got to step back from this. All right. Who supplies Hamas? It's Iran. And you've got to look at Iran's role in this uh, current uh, conflict. Certainly, Egypt uh, is, has a hand from Morsi and his uh, disastrous economic policies. But what it's done for Iran, it certainly has taken the Iran nuclear issue off the table. You can't even find it in the paper today. Right. And let's face it, Iran has been at war with the United States for over 33 years. They conducted another act of war just a week or so ago when they fired on our unmanned drone. As usual, we uh, did not come forth to meet the challenge. Admiral, thank you very much. And as you point out, the uh, national media not taking note of uh, Iran in, the, in this context of the uh, uh, conflict between Israel and Hamas, not taking note of the president's agenda and the absence of uh, uh, China on, its, uh, on his specific pivot. Admiral, uh, we always appreciate talking to you. Thanks so much for your time. Nice.